Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I am back in the UK, in the same room that I filmed the intro in. Now, you might have expected the next instalment of the vlog, but unfortunately, I don't have any more footage. That is because my phone, which I was recording the vlog on, was stolen. This happened in Xi'an the evening after I'd just been to see the Terracotta Warriors. And to try and make a long story short, I was in a restaurant in this sort of the cubicle seating where the table is between some sofas and a few chairs. Uh, and I was sat on the sofa. The sofa back wasn't particularly high, probably when I was sat down just, just below shoulder level. I was charging my phone using a portable charger that I'd also brought with me and I couldn't fit both of those back in my pocket so I placed them both next to me on the seating between me and my bag and then my bag was sort of at the end of the cubicle seating area pretty much next to a wall in effect. So I was then concentrating on my food, which I remember being very hot and I was just sort of focused on trying to not burn my tongue. But then once I'd finished eating, I noticed that my phone and charger had both disappeared. After searching to see if they had perhaps fallen on the floor, I saw that there was a security camera pointing pretty much directly at where I had been sitting and I managed to communicate with a staff member and ask them to take a look at it. They came back with footage which showed a man walking into the restaurant. He came behind my seating, reached over the back of the cubicle and picked up both my phone and the charger without me noticing and then just left the restaurant. At this point, the staff managed to find uh, someone else who was in there who could also speak English and she let me borrow her phone so I could lock my one remotely that had been stolen. The police were then called and luckily one of them had studied English. Up until that point, while I was traveling on my own, I had been using Google Translate on my phone to help me out in situations, but obviously that wasn't gonna work now. But yeah, luckily one of them spoke English. I then went to the police station in Xi'an and filed a report, but I, I don't know if anything came of it, if they found the person who stole my phone um, or yeah, what happened after that really. Because of that palaver, I ended up missing my train to my next destination, so I had to then spend an extra night in Xi'an before moving on with my travels. Now, you might ask, but well, why don't you have any footage between Hangzhou, where you left us, and Xi'an, where your phone was stolen? Unfortunately, I was about 10 days behind on uploading footage to Google Drive. I'll admit, I didn't quite think things through when I left for China. Naturally, the phone that I was doing the vlog on ran out of storage space about 10 days into being in China. So from then on, I had to start moving footage to the cloud um, in order to free up space on my phone so the vlog could continue since I didn't actually take a normal camera out with me with spare memory cards that I could just insert instead which in hindsight would have been a much easier and much better way of going about this vlog. So from then on I was pretty much always 10 days behind on uploading things to Google Drive. I also hadn't properly looked into iCloud storage and how that worked, so none of the videos that I had been filming were being backed up on there either. And so I lost all of the footage that I had from my time in Suzhou, Shanghai and Shanghai Disneyland, uh, and of course Xi An. The only footage that did actually save to iCloud was this. <laughs> which I took after a fountain show that they have in Xi'an. 
I do luckily have photos that I uploaded to Instagram before my phone was stolen just to prove that I was actually there in Shanghai and Shanghai Disneyland. My mum also had the great idea of taking a backup phone just in case of emergencies which obviously proved very useful. It couldn't actually record video, but it did have a camera. I managed to get a few decent shots of the rest of my time in China, and I have photographic evidence that I also went to Beijing and the Great Wall of China. But I guess I now have a story that I can share, which will hopefully make you guys a bit more vigilant when you're traveling by yourself or a bit more prepared on the technical side of things if you ever decide to do your own vlog of this kind. As a quick roundup of everything that I unfortunately haven't been able to show, Hangzhou and Suzhou were beautiful. I mentioned in the intro that I also lost the little tripod that I took um, to use with my phone. We hired bikes to get around Hangzhou during our days there just to speed things up a bit. Unfortunately in the flurry of spending too much time there, missing our train, having to buy more tickets to Suzhou, I think I ended up leaving the little tripod in the basket of my bike. I guess that was a freebie to whoever came up and use the bike next. And then Shanghai was a great place to visit and experience. Although the weather meant that I couldn't actually get up to the top of Shanghai Tower since it was so cloudy, um, I wouldn't have actually seen anything if I had taken the lift up there. So I wound up one of the smaller ones, still couldn't really see that much, unfortunately. After Shanghai, this is where I parted ways with Rian, and I've obviously lost the footage where I said this, but a massive thank you to her for putting up with all of my vlogging. I hope it wasn't too annoying, but it was great to travel around with you. From then I continued on by myself and of course I absolutely adored my day at Disneyland Shanghai. It's obviously not necessarily the traditional Chinese culture that I had gone out to the country to experience, but I think every trip is made a bit better with a sprinkling of Disney magic. I then made my way to Xi'an and the terracotta warriors that are out there are definitely worth a visit. They were really impressive. Admittedly then the phone theft incident happened and it did put a bit of a downer on the rest of my time in China as I was already pretty tired and wiped out by that point. I had my little cry and moment of despair in the hostel that I was staying at that evening but then I had to get on with it because I wasn't going to leave China unless I managed to make my way to Beijing airport. So I visited Pingyao and then Datong from which I went to see the Hanging Temple as well as the Buddha statues in Yangon grottoes before finally arriving in Beijing. One bit of advice would be to try and avoid the hard seat style overnight trains if at all possible. Arriving into Beijing at 5am in the morning, having spent the night on one of these hard seats and getting very little sleep was not fun. The Great Wall of China was definitely one of the best things that I did during my time around Beijing, if not of the whole two months that I was there. I was able to go to a bit of the wall that was a bit hidden away and not as crowded with tourists. So I just got a few hours to walk along and take it all in and it was, it was really breathtaking. The Forbidden City, Temple of Heaven and Summer Palace are also all worth checking out in Beijing if you are ever there. Unfortunately, Tiananmen Square and the Olympic Park were closed while I was there for some sort of conference that was happening. And then I was at the airport and flying home. Overall, it was an amazing few months and despite certain incidents, I was definitely glad that I got to experience it all. It was great to delve into 
the Chinese culture and get to know all about the country. There are lots of beautiful places to go and visit, um, really interesting cities. It's given me a newfound love of bubble tea and egg waffles and this egg and tomato noodle dish, which while I was out there is pretty much the staple vegetarian dish in the areas that I went to at least. A shout out to everyone who I was volunteering on the camps with. Thank you for making my time out there so enjoyable and thank you for putting up with all my vlogging. Hopefully it wasn't too annoying me shoving the camera down your faces all the time, but hopefully this series should bring back some wonderful and maybe not so wonderful memories. So hopefully you found this vlog interesting and it's given you an insight into what it might be like to volunteer out in China and travel around the country. And hopefully it might have inspired you to go out and do the same. I guess this is where this series finally comes to an end. So thank you everyone for watching, whether you've just tuned in for one episode or watched every single one of them. Since this is the last video in the series, make sure you give it a thumbs up and comment down below any thoughts or questions that you have about my time out in China. Thank you very much again for watching and I will see you all later. Bye.